Hank, Hank, we can't take you out in public, buddy. Hank, this is Andrew Jackson's house. A Andrew Jackson, like the president? Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson. The guy in Nashville told me it was Alan the Jackson. The guy in Nashville was confused. He was very much like you. I'm not confused. Good morning, welcome Hi, to I'm the Heritage. Young. Hi. Hi, I'm Hank Nam. Carolyn Brackett. Carolyn, whose house is this? This is Andrew Jackson's house. Not Alan Jackson, huh? No. Oh well. Luckily, my overwhelming charm was enough to win over Carolyn as she led us through the home of our nation's seventh president. There are about 200,000 visitors who come to the Hermitage each year. We're the third most visited presidential site. And when they come here, they really get an overview of what Andrew Jackson's life was like and how important he was in American history. But they also learn about the 19th century and they learn about how a plantation operated. These are the first Hermitage cabins. This is where the Jacksons lived before the mansion was built. Andrew and Rachel lived in this cabin. It was actually two stories at the time that they lived in it. And this is the second story. So they stayed in these buildings approximately 15 years almost, while they were waiting for the, new, for the big house to be built? Almost 17 years. They started construction of the mansion in 1819. Um, and it took a couple of years to finish it. Following a devastating fire in 1834, President Jackson had no choice but to build again. And that's when it took on the appearance that it has today with the beautiful Greek Revival style and the columns and the majesty that you see in this beautiful house. This is Andrew Jackson's bedroom. This is the room that he died in. And this is the room that most people want to see when they come to visit here because it's so historically important. The portrait over the uh, dresser is of Andrew Jackson. It was finished about a week before he died. And the portrait over the mantle is of Rachel, his wife. And he wanted this portrait hung here so that it would be the first thing he, he saw in the morning again. and the last thing he saw at night before he went to sleep. What really surprised Bill and I is almost all of the furnishings belong to Andrew Jackson. We've done a complete restoration on the home and almost everything in the house is original. So if Andrew Jackson walked through those front doors today, he would be at home. He would immediately recognize this home. This was the home of Alfred Jackson. Alfred was born here in around 1812. He was born here into slavery and he lived here all of his life. He worked for Andrew Jackson and then when the Ladies Hermitage Association took over the property in 1889 he was still living here in this cabin and he became a tour guide. And of course he was a quite elderly gentleman at that time and he would tell visitors about his memories of Andrew Jackson and actually working for Andrew Jackson. He lived here until 1901 and when he died he was buried in the garden next to Jackson. This is the tomb where Andrew and Rachel are buried. Uh, Rachel is on the far side and as you can see she has a very long epitaph on her tombstone and Jackson's is right here closest to us and his just says General Andrew Jackson. That's what he wanted. He didn't want it to say President. He had this uh, tomb built for Rachel in her honor and of course we're here in the garden that she loves so much. And Andrew outlived Rachel by how many years? He outlived her by 17 years, and he really grieved for her for the rest of his life. When he was in his retirement years, he would come out here every afternoon and sit at the tomb next to her grave and, and grieve for her. How did he get the nickname Old Hickory? He had given his horse to a soldier who was ill, and he marched the entire way. And one of his soldiers said, he's as tough as Old Hickory. Well, Carolyn, I really want to thank you for having Bill and I here at the Hermitage House. We really learned a lot, so thank you. Well, thanks for coming. Carolyn, thanks. Hank, thank you. Andrew Jackson. Folks, stay with us. We will be right back. Hi, Cycle Fever is glad to welcome Blake Palmer. Blake, we're glad to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank and you I know much. that when I think of Dion, I think of Blake. Blake, tell us a little bit about your process. Wow, it's neat. Uh, I've got a little unit that I pulled together for a friend of mine. I do Dion for Honda Gold Wings primarily, but I also do her Harley Davidson, Yamahas, etc. I get the glass up to about a thousand degrees temperature in a controlled area where I can bend it. I follow a particular pattern. Uh, matter of fact, my motorcycle, we used it as a prototype to make sure all the parts fit first before we sell them to the customers. And I've only got 14 pieces of neon on my motorcycle. It looks like a halo going down the street at nighttime. It drives people crazy. What is that? What is that? My God. Are you going to be able yeah. to demo your, uh, your little invention over here for us? Like I said, this is about 1,000 degrees. It takes about 25 seconds to get it up to that particular temperature. The hose in my mouth I use to adjust the air inside the tube. 
I'll complete it with another electrode. Then I'll put it under a vacuum, hit it with some high electricity. Let it cool down, and then backfill it with, with gas, seal it with a hand torch, and there you got it. There's your Harley Davidson logo. How you doing? I'm Hank Knapp. Nice to see you. Pete Pittman, Ernest Tub Records. Pete, hi, I'm Bill Young. Good to see you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. They gotta have it. I'll tell you. We're looking for the Cycle Fever theme song. You can help okay. us. I know you can. Well, we can give it a shot. You it's the try? hottest sound in Nashville. All right, let's go look. You think it's under Tom? You know, Tom. 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 T. T. Tom. T. Yeah. Capital T. That ain't it. Tom. O. Ernest Tubb started the stores in uh, 1947. When he'd peer around the country, a lot of the uh, people at uh, his audiences would ask, well, how can we get your records, even though he was a best-selling artist? That's not it. Try to ask. Come on, it got to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah, right here. Oh, okay. Ernest uh, helped a lot of people by bringing them onto the uh, his Midnight Jamboree. A lot of struggling artists coming up to include uh, Loretta Lynn, even Patsy Cline, Hank Snow, Hank Thompson, Hank Williams, as a matter of fact. You know, I, I bet it's under H for, for the Hank Show, because I really did thought that, that should have been the name of the thing. So let, right, maybe they just renamed it the out. wrong title. Okay. That's a little age. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. I, I know you tried your best, man. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks anyway. Thanks yeah. yeah. Thank. Does this thing exist? Buddy, I'm beginning to doubt it, you know? Oh, man. Let's, let's go, man. It was heartbreaking. Our theme song. The time had come for Bill and I to leave. And as we drove out of town, we couldn't help but dwell on that song in the sky. Maybe we're naive. Maybe it was never recorded. But for those few miles, Bill and I couldn't help but hum a simple tune that sat deep in our hearts. Got to keep it going and singing your song in Psycho Fever. 